Hey guys, Jason here. Welcome to Timber Falls, home for CNC creators like you. In today's video, we're going to go over how to add a bit to the tool database that may not already be in the database or may not be in one of the manufacturer's library. In a previous video, which I'll link below, I showed how to customize this database in CarveCo. The first thing you want to do is navigate to where you want to enter the tool into. So if you have your own custom tool database, that you're created for yourself, you're going to want to go into that particular group and add a new tool. When the add toolbox opens up, the first line we have is a place for our description. I often put a very general description. If it's a quarter inch end mill, I just put a quarter inch end mill up cut or down cut or compression bit. You can also create tools for different types of wood. You may have a bit set up for softwoods, a bit set up for hardwoods, and you can have uh, copies of the same bit with different settings saved for different cutting conditions. And you can put those descriptions up here in the top line. The next box down is our tool type. Now this is going to be what kind of bit that you're using. And depending on what you select, will change the geometry entries on the right hand side. And for instance, we have our ball nose selected, which allows us to put in the diameter of the ball nose, our step down, our step over, our spindle speed, our feed rate, and our plunge rate. These tool units can be changed between inches or millimeters, depending on what type of bit you have. You can see by this diagram, it shows you what the profile of this bit is and what it's measuring. The diameter is the width of the bit head. Moving down, we have a slot drill. A slot drill is any kind of end mill or straight flute bits would also be a slot drill. And also it's just measuring the diameter of the bit. The step down is how much of the bit is going to cut in one pass. So that's the depth of cut or step down. The radius slot drill, this is often what your bowl bits or your tray bits are. The tray bit or bowl bit has sort of a flat surface at the bottom, but it's also rounded. Now radius is half the diameter. So you're only measuring from one side to the middle of the shank of the bit. When we have our V bits, we have our included angle. This will be the angle that the V bit is. If it's a 30 degree, you would put in 30 degrees here. The diameter of the bit is the diameter of the head of the V bit, not the shank size. You can see up here where it says D diameter that it's actually measuring from one side of the head to the other. So we're looking for the head size in the V bit. We have a radius engraver. A radius engraver is another name for a tapered ball nose bit. This has a radius that goes down to a rounded bottom. You just need to go to the manufacturer that you bought the bit from and look for these settings in their sale page. A lot of times they have these listed down in the description of the bit itself on the, the sale pages of the bits. A flat engraver is another name for just an, an engraving bit. Flat engraver is a V bit that has a flat tip. And you can see that it offers us the place to put in this flat radius. We have our angle of our V bit and then our diameter of the shank. Radius flat engraver is a tapered end mill. The tapered end mill has a flat bottom, but is radiused on either sides. This is not a common bit, so you don't see this one very much. We have our OG tool. An OG tool is often used for paneling. We have the Roman OG tool that has a small lip that's added to it. We have our round over tool where we put in our arc radius, our inner diameter, and our exterior diameter. So this round over tool, we have a place to put in our inner diameter and our outer diameter. The raised panel OG, the cove, the panel cove, the panel straight, these are all bits that are designed for paneling and have places to enter all the measurements. The last selection we have is the custom form tool. Now the custom form tool is only available in Maker Plus. The custom form tool allows you to create a tool based on a vector shape. This vector shape is only going to represent the radius 
radius of this bit, which is half the diameter. For example, I'm going to create a line and we're just going to start with a point 10 by 10 and then we're going to make a point 125, an eighth of an inch, and then we're going to do a negative 45 degree angle at another eighth of an inch. So I have an eighth of an inch that's a flat and then an eighth of an inch angled down. And if I go over to this button, Create Custom Form Tool, you'll see that it has created a new tool with this shape geometry. An eighth of an inch flat down to an eighth of an inch 45 degree angle tip. And it calculated that my bit is roughly 0.42 inches in diameter. And it's only measuring the distance between this point and this point. It also calculated the step down. Now it calculates the step down at roughly half of the bit depth. So it's only trying to cut half of the tip depth. If you wanted to make this cut deeper, you could adjust your step down. Please note that anytime you're using a CNC machine, you don't want to use any kind of bits that have a bearing on the end of them. If your bit has a bearing on the end, that bearing needs to come off in order to use the bit with the CNC machine. On all of these bits, I didn't mention step over the spindle speed or the feed rate. I'm going to link a video down below on how to figure this out or how to factor that for any bit. This is different for every type of material and you should really dial in your feed rates depending on your machine and your setup. Guys, if you found this tutorial helpful, give us a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel and share this with someone. I'd like to give a big thanks to all of our Timber Falls Elite members. You guys keep the bit spinning and we really appreciate your support. If you're interested in becoming a Timber Falls Elite, check out the link below or our website at timberfalls.us. Thanks, guys.